evening, cinnamon bun. Yeah, I thought it might be fun to talk a little bit about meditation and astral travel or astral tripping or whatever you want to call it and my kind of weird-ish history with it and what I've found that is actually helpful as someone that has never really been very good at it. <laughs> yeah, I've had some particular struggles with meditation that I don't really see talked about anywhere and I've had to find like workarounds that work for me and I thought I'd just ramble about it for a bit. If you are <laughs> at all witchy or spiritual or magical or uh, any of the above, um, you've probably heard over and over again how important and helpful meditation is. And even if you're not any of those things, you've probably heard or probably had someone tell you that you should start meditating <laughs> uh, or that you should try it um, because like there's like a million studies that say how good it is for all of us, for your brain, for your mental health, all sorts. Um, but also specifically if you are a, a witch or a witchy type of person, um, like it tends to be one of the like foundational building blocks that a lot of um, magical texts and magical advice will talk about. Um, it will always stress like you know, first and foremost, you need to be like having a dedicated meditation practice and you need to be doing this and uh, you need to be able to focus and um, like this is the bedrock of all kind of spirituality <laughs> and stuff, um, which I just, yeah, I find it interesting because um, I am a witch and I have basically never had any kind of consistent meditation practice and a lot of the most common, most frequently used uh, forms of meditation do not work for me for various reasons which I will get into. But I've also gotten really into astral stuff, um, like guided meditation slash visualization stuff, um, those kinds of things I've gotten really into in the last few months um, or even longer actually and I would like to do more of but again it's another thing where I don't really know there's certain things about what I'm doing or the resources that I'm using that aren't quite working and so I'm kind of looking for somewhere to go next with that as well let's start with a little history lesson <laughs> is this camera angle bugging me maybe this is fine but first whiskey my history with meditation. Back in ye olde Rachel times, so like my first kind of ride on the witchy carousel uh, back when I was in my, what would it have been, late teens, early 20s, 19, 20, 21-ish, Jesus. And I was first getting into, I guess, just spirituality in general, but specifically, specifically at the time it was more Wicca, because that's more what was available. And I was always particularly interested in the Wheel of the Year. Um, that was one of my first, that was kind of how I got into witchcraft and stuff in a more, in the first kind of real way. I actually tried creating a couple of guided meditations for myself and they were um, about, they were kind of dedicated to different Sabbaths. Um, I think I had one for Yule and one for Ostara, I believe. I, yeah, used them very infrequently, <laughs> obviously, and uh, it never really kind of went anywhere. I never really got out of it what I, whatever it was that I was wanting to get out of it. Yeah, and then I fell away from all of that for several years, and what am I, where am I going with this? After that, for several years, the closest that I came to meditation was yoga. Um, and so I had started out doing some classes. It was very sporadic, like I only did a couple of them. Um, but then, you know, years later and stuff, I started doing things more at home. And obviously yoga and meditation are very closely linked. Like yoga itself is a kind of moving meditation. It's like, it's a kind of mindfulness practice because 
hopefully the idea is that you are focusing on um, how your body feels and how each new posture changes that and stuff. Um, so it's a kind of mindfulness exercise in itself, but it also can include like, you know, more traditional meditation as well, where you are just sitting or lying in a particular position and just doing nothing, you know, just being with your thoughts. Um, or it might be something more specific. And so I had a little bit of experience with that and that was fine, but it was never like a regular practice for me. And then I went through a period in my life which was very, very anxious. <laughs> Uh, I struggled a lot with anxiety. I had several really bad panic attacks, um, which I didn't understand were panic attacks at the time that I was having them. Um, ended up in like accident and emergency with that, and like even then, paramedics and doctors and stuff that saw me didn't identify or like tell me that that's what was going on. And just generally, I think it, whether when you struggle with all sorts of mental health problems, if it is anxiety or depression, those common ones, or if it's something a little bit less common, um, a lot of the time part of the, like if you do research or if you, if you speak to someone about it, a lot of the time you will be advised to start meditating on a regular basis. Um, that tends to be, you know, pretty standard advice. And it's been, I'm, I, I can't name the studies because I'm not a scientist, but I know, that it has been proven to like help a lot of different things when it comes to your brain. Um, the issue, so I tried on and off, um, and I've tried, you know, the different, you know, I've tried like apps like Headspace or just doing my own thing and stuff. And the thing that I kept coming back to with traditional forms of meditation is that so, so many of them are all focused on your breathing and my anxiety primarily rears its stupid ugly head by making me hyperventilate <laughs> which is again something that I only realized like years later you know once it once it had stopped kind of dominating my life and things had gotten a lot better I realized that the panic spirals that I got into were largely because of hyperventilation which I won't get into in a ton of detail but it's it doesn't look like it does in uh, the movies or on TV, you know, it's not like breathing into a brown bag. <laughs> I could go an entire week not breathing normally, um, maybe just when I was asleep, and no one noticed, you know, I was still at work, I was working as a barista and stuff back then, and uh, it wasn't visible to anyone, but I felt awful <laughs> and like I couldn't breathe. Uh, all of that time and the main thing with me was that it was a kind of vicious cycle because if I would start to hyperventilate and I can feel myself just talking about it just getting a little bit out of whack in my breathing excellent yeah it was this vicious cycle because um, I would unconsciously start to hyperventilate which just meant that my breathing was too shallow um, and too quick and like yeah I haven't done a ton of research into the science of what happens um, but I mean not in a long time so I hope I'm describing this in a way that makes sense um, but essentially you're just breathing too fast and too shallow and so um, the kind of balance of taking in oxygen um, and breathing out carbon dioxide gets out of whack and so you end up just getting a buildup of carbon dioxide which can have other effects and the main thing for me was that like I would actually start to get an ache and a tightness in my chest um, because my breathing was out of whack it would get worse and worse and so the pain would then make it more difficult to get back into a norm normal breathing rhythm and that would compound and get worse and worse and so like meditating by focusing on my breath actually anxiety inducing instead of in anxiety reducing <laughs> and so I found that super frustrating is that like all of these like meditation resources and stuff that I could find were all about just focus on your breathing and relax and blah blah, blah. and I was like okay I can't do those two things at the same time <laughs> um, because it, I'd gotten so the link between anxiety and being conscious of my breathing was so strong 
that even just bringing my attention to my breathing was enough to put it out of whack and then I would struggle to get it back into some into a normal rhythm um, and it, like I say it's getting slightly out of whack just speaking about this so for that reason I kind of just swore off of that kind of meditation you know the kind where you are just sitting uh, you know counting breaths or focusing on your breath or whatever um, I just didn't do it I think I did have a kind of cursory bit of research on like alternatives but I never really got anywhere with it and that is part of why I ended up liking yoga which is that I can actually focus on my breathing while I do yoga if I'm moving because it's not the sole thing I'm focusing on. Yeah, it's more about just I'm focusing enough on my breathing to time it to the movements, but I'm actually focusing on the sensations of the movements, not the sensation of breathing, if that makes sense. But I think for the most part, I still thought of and I probably still think of yoga as primarily an exercise thing, not a meditation thing. Um, even though I have gone through periods where I've done it, you know, every day for like, couple of weeks or a month or two and have gotten benefits from that. Yeah and then I hadn't really explored any kind of guided meditations um, or anything of that sort really since all those years ago when I was trying some myself. Yes but that all actually changed when I um, joined this um, like cyclical health like menstrual health course uh, called Moon School by Clara Bailey um, which you might have heard me mention before. Uh, I'm a big fan, I'm not an affiliate. I don't know if there are affiliates, but uh, I just took it and found it really helpful. Yeah, so it's this course which kind of blends um, like holistic health and medicine and menstrual health with spirituality. Um, and it was just a really nice mix for me. I've always struggled with my cycle. I have really terrible periods, I always have. And so, um, that's primarily why I joined. I liked that there was this kind of spiritual slant on it as well because I was interested in that and because I'm a witch. Um, and one of the things I absolutely loved, which I got the most out of in that course, is that there are different meditations to do for different phases in your cycle. And as an introductory part of that course, you know, um, it was explained like, why does meditation and visualization, like, why is it so good for anxiety and for our brains which was really interesting talking about you know how activating uh i'm gonna get this wrong is it the prefrontal cortex that is the part of your brain that's activated when you do visualization is also the part that governs um chill things <laughs> um like your kind of like higher brain functions you know like um whereas oh my god i'm totally butchering this am i it can basically in layman's terms, feel free to <laughs> correct me in the comments if you understand this better than I do. Um, it basically like switches your brain off of the flight, fight or flight or freeze track, you know, that like um, that place where anxiety and stress live, it switches it off of that track into kind of resting mode, you know, normal, normal brain mode whatever that is, which is one of the reasons that meditation is so helpful and recommended for mental health problems, especially anxiety. But the thing that uh, I took away or that I found the most interesting about that was um, that it wasn't just about meditation in general, it was specifically about visualization type meditations. And I was like, okay, I actually haven't really delved into that at all. So I gave all of the ones uh, in this course a go I feel like I haven't even spoken about the unconscious or the subconscious yet. Anyway, so this kind of like explanation or justification for meditation was super in line with my kind of perspective on spirituality and stuff, which is that um, it's a very helpful thing for your brain and it's very helpful to be able to kind of plumb the depths a little bit of your subconscious because there's a lot of stuff going on in there and meditations like that are fundamentally ways to kind of communicate and open a channel with your subconscious and in my particular perspective your subconscious is where magic lives <laughs> that's like what it is so I was very interested to give this a try 
and I had some really awesome experiences with those meditations. Um, the first one uh, that I tried is this kind of like visualization to go and meet your own wisest self and like talk to them and get, you know, advice <laughs> or guidance and stuff from them. Um, and it was incredible. I feel like I'm almost, I have quite a high tolerance for new age <laughs> and spiritual shit, but even I, I, even I to myself feel like I sound like a twat, but it's fine. Yeah, it was a kind of a revelation for me, to be honest. I had never done anything like that and it felt very profound, which obviously is kind of, I mean, sometimes the point of these things um, is to, yeah, go inwards and, and experience and to feel like you've gained something real by the end of it, as well as whatever good it's doing for your brain chemistry. So that was huge for me. It was a kind of meditation that didn't rely on me focusing on my breathing, that was about visualization and had this amazing result where I felt like I'd really gotten something huge out of it and I'd really had this kind of magical experience. Um, and so, yeah, I kind of went along with this course and tried the other ones. Um, I think with a lot of meditations, especially guided ones, um, it can be a bit hit and miss as to what works specifically for you. And so some of them worked better than others, um, but some of the others I also had incredibly deep <laughs> uh, witchy experiences with. Um, there's one in particular about um, talking with a shadow spirit and uh, <laughs> shit went down <laughs> in the, I think I've done that, what, twice, three times now? And um, it's been intense every time, uh, but good. Serious, serious witchy shit. Um, so my experiences with this kind of opened up the world of kind of like guided meditations, guided visualizations, basically everything that I would consider to be like astral work or astral travel or astral tripping or astral journeying or whatever you want to call it. Um, that's kind of how I think of it because again, to me, the subconscious and magic and the astral, it's all the same thing. It's all plumbing the depths. And so it kind of opened up this wider world to me. Um, of like the things that I could do with it, the kinds of experiences that I could have with it, which was really cool. But even these meditations, which I consider to be like the best ones that I've ever tried, um, or the ones that worked best for me, still had certain aspects that didn't work for me. Um, still had particular parts that were focused on breathing, um, which again, actually makes it harder for me to get into a relaxed state. It actually stresses me out. <laughs> and so, yeah, I've been thinking about like kind of DIYing things a bit for myself in like doing a couple of minutes of yoga as a kind of mindful, relaxing part of the kind of intro to the meditation and then skipping, you know, a breathing section and then getting straight into the visualization. I think I would like to try stuff like that. Yes. And I think as well, like that kind of opened my eyes to how, yes, some of these were like the first experiences I had of um, being surprised by what unfolded inside the experience I was having in my own head, <laughs> which I spoke to a friend about. And yeah, I think the way that I kind of describe it is that I managed to get into a flow of like, you know, following the guided parts of the meditation, you know, like consciously picturing this particular place or this particular, or doing this particular thing and kind of leading what was going on in my head um, consciously, but then also allowing those things to evolve in what feels like just of their own accord and let my subconscious kind of fill in the spaces. And the way that that feels to me often is that um, I'll be like going through a meditation and I will get like a flicker of what happens next. Like I'll get this flash of an image or this flash of an idea and it doesn't just unfold perfectly without me having to, my, me having to consciously do anything, but I will get these flashes and I take them as cues from my subconscious that that is what happens next. And so I will then like, you know, I'll get this flash and take that as, okay, that's the truth of what happened. 
and then kind of like unfold it and unpack what that looks like and stuff in my head um, a bit more consciously. And that has led to some really beautiful things and it's led to some very scary things. <laughs> and um, it's just been very interesting. Um, but that kind of opened me up to the what kinds of things are possible uh, to do in your own stupid little headspace with these kinds of things where it can feel very magical, very profound, um, even though it's just you in your own little head. So I've come a long way and I've become super interested in like what I'm calling astral work um, now because of this and I am really interested to explore, experiment with it uh, for different things, not just like spiritual development or um, like witchy goals um, or shadow work goals, but like what about creative goals? Um, like I, I wanted to create a meditation uh, where a kind of like creative spirit leads you around an important location in a creative work of yours, so like in a story that you might be writing or creating somehow. I was like, wouldn't that be such a cool way to explore um, fictional locations and stuff that you're like maybe making for something? It, yeah, I'm not... <laughs> I don't know if that project will ever get finished, but I still like the idea of it. Yeah, and because like working with spirits and deities is such a central part of my practice and what I'm interested in as a witch and tends to be like the majority of what I do as a witch has some kind of like working with a particular spirit or deity like component. This like new method of experiencing things um, and of communicating with spirits and deities was just super super exciting to me and again like super not new to a lot of people but um it just took me experiencing it in a new way and kind of seeing some of the benefits of it that I was like oh shit this is kind of revolutionary for me. I think now I want to talk about like what useful things I have found as someone that can't do a lot of traditional meditation for body and mental health reasons. The first of which is, like I say, I can't do things that focus on breathing because of my history with anxiety and my particular symptoms uh, that come up. But something else that I've also been thinking about is focus. Um, if you've been around on my channel for a little bit, you'll probably know that I probably have ADHD. And so that has kind of also made me think about it in a new way and thinking like, oh, that obviously would make meditation more difficult, right? <laughs> um, and it's specifically like some kinds of meditation, you know, more traditional kind of like emptying your mind or focusing your breathing kinds are about um, building that muscle of focus um, through practice. You know, the point is to get distracted from the breath or whatever and then come back to it over and over again. But that's something that I found really, that I've also thought about in terms of astral work and uh, work in the subconscious and in the mind, is that I think that's part of what made these guided kind of astral journeys so helpful for me is that it led me on very clearly and didn't give me too much time to get distracted. Like it kept bringing me back to whatever it was that was the purpose of it. Um, because I think that is, and I don't know if I've ever tested this, maybe, maybe that's how I got the impression that it wasn't really for me, is that I think I would struggle a lot to do astral work without any kind of guide, without something in the moment leading me from one point to the next, um, because in my everyday life, my brain is just constantly ricocheting around a million different things and things that are a lot easier mentally, like watching a YouTube video, I still get distracted. I, I will zone out of a YouTube video and rewind the same section like three times and have to, and every time I'll zone out again and be like, I missed that, cool, let's rewind. Um, that's another kind of barrier to meditation that isn't, that I personally at least haven't seen much discussion uh, on is like if you do have something uh, like ADHD which specifically makes it incredibly difficult to focus, like meditation is focus and so how do we 
get the benefits of that while also recognizing that it might be more difficult for some people. And so because of that, yeah, I haven't really tried, you know, free form astral work going in and trying to, even, even if I was gonna plan out a particular journey um, in advance, I wouldn't remember <laughs> the steps of it and I'd have to open my eyes and refer to things um, but even if I did remember them I don't think that I could stay focused in that way to actually get the same kind of to get deep into it and get the same kind of experience out of it and I think if I didn't have any kind of structure planned in advance I was just like hey I'm gonna hop onto the astral for a bit see what's up um I imagine that would go I don't know where the hell would that would go. Actually, now I'm kind of interested to find out. I don't know that I'd get anywhere with that. So, because of that, um, I've been thinking about what works and stuff, and I would like to explore other, you know, sort. I know there's tons of like guided meditations and stuff that you can probably find online. Um, other than the stuff in Moon School, I haven't really found anything that I vibe with, to be honest. Um, I think like, I feel like I have a pretty high tolerance for new age bullshit, but there is this kind of like particular layer of cheese <laughs> when it comes to like some meditation things that are very new agey that I just cannot stomach. Um, and so I don't really know where to go for good versions of those things that vibe with me. And so, hey, if you've got any suggestions, please do share them down below. But it's made me think a lot about like, okay, well, why not just like perfectly customize and tailor something for me, like make something myself. Um, and the answer to that is that it's kind of annoying to learn how to record and edit audio <laughs> um, in a way that doesn't make me hate my own voice. But that's something that I would consider exploring a bit more. Um, something that I'd also thought about doing is using music as cues you know, making a playlist essentially of tracks and like marking transitions in whatever it is that's going on on the astral, like wherever the journey is going, marking those transitions by the song changing um, and taking that as, okay, now it's time to move on to the next section of this, which I think could be cool. Obviously still not quite as structured because you're still like looking at a full minute or two uh, on one particular section, which is quite long and probably long enough to get lost a little bit. But maybe that would work well. I don't know, I wanna try it. Okay, so having rambled all of that about how I feel about astral work and meditation and blah, 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 blah. Um, I'd like to close with just some tips that I have found that help me, that just help me <laughs> with this kind of stuff. Um, if you are someone that wants to do more of it or wants to give it a try, um, but has particular struggles with it, whether they're similar to mine or not. First things first, if focusing on your breathing stresses you out more, you don't have to do that. <laughs> um, it is hard to find alternatives, uh, which is kind of why I'm making this video, but um, there are alternatives. There are, yeah, guided meditations are good um, if they do start with some kind of relaxation that involves focusing on your breathing, um, you can skip that and find an alternative. Um, you can do like a body scan or whatever. There's like lots of standard things. So guided ones are good. Moving meditation. So yoga, I find like I want to start using it more, thinking of it as meditation and doing it for my brain instead of just for my body. At the moment, I'm not doing it regularly at all, but that's an option. And then more like mindfulness style meditations can be good as well. Um, and I haven't been doing any of that really very recently, but it's something I did get into more in the past, which did work, um, which is bringing all of your attention and focus to the, th the physical thing that you are doing in that moment and kind of doing it mindfully. <laughs> um, so like if you are say doing the dishes, um, you know, bringing your attention to all of the sensations that go around with that. Um, so like, how do the dishes feel on your hands? What's the sensation of like the soap and the water? Um, what does it sound like to scrub something? Just focusing on all of your senses throughout that process can be a good way to meditate. And you can basically apply that to anything, which is super cool. I used to do that a lot more with housework stuff and I don't really anymore because I think, I don't know, I think I just got a bit bored of it. 
as I do everything. Haven't really gone back, but an alternative that I do like is, which I do still do fairly regularly, is like mindful listening um, or active listening. So um, my old flat was uh, like a third floor flat um, and the view out of the back, the living room window uh, was actually really nice. And so I, that actually was a bit of a magical space for me where I would open the window wide and set up my chair and stuff in the window, um, you know, have some tea or whatever on the windowsill and um, just like watch and listen out the window. And that became a bit of a meditation practice for me for a while. Active listening, like, I think it started for me as a kind of urban witchcraft thing because I was like, hey, urban sounds can also be good. <laughs> yeah, for me, it was like a way of kind of connecting with a little bit of urban magic, but it got me into this habit of meditating by focusing on all of the sounds that I could hear and just listening to them and focusing on that and getting distracted and then bringing my attention back to the sounds that I could hear. And I would just try and pick out as many as I could and in my old flat, it would be things like, I mean, there's always traffic noise. Um, I would sometimes be able to hear a train rattling past in the distance and there'd be like bird song. Um, sometimes I'd hear like bin men, like rattling, like bins and stuff out of the uh, back gardens and stuff. Um, and I mean, you can do that with like visual stuff as well. It was kind of like an observation kind of thing, you know, where I'd watch, like, I'd be like, what do the trees look like today? What does the sky look like today? Or all these little details that I can notice from this window. Um, and I find that is super helpful for me. And perhaps this is, perhaps this is an ADHD related thing because it's something to focus on, but it changes. So it keeps it interesting because the sounds are not the same all the time. Um, it's not just one boring thing that I have to keep bringing my, my brain back to. It's like an ever-changing landscape that I am tuning, I'm choosing to tune into over and over again. Um, that was very eloquent, Rachel, well done. I don't do that like sitting at the window anymore um, because all of my windows now face out onto the main road and I don't really have that nice view, but I do do it when I go for walks and stuff. Um, I try to make an effort to not always be listening to music or a podcast or whatever and take walks where I am, where it's a mindful walk, you know, I'm looking, I'm taking in my surroundings and how they look and how they feel and how they sound. Um, and that can be super nice. And I also find it a really nice way to like get in touch with your surroundings, obviously. Um, and as a city witch and someone that's really interested in like city magic and the, the vibes of the world directly around me, that was a really good way to do that. Um, so that's a tip that I have for you. Um, the other things I have are you don't need to be as precious about meditating as you think you do, or as I thought I did. When I used to meditate in the past, I would get very stiff and still, and I would feel like I had to be perfectly still and perfectly silent. And I think this comes from like maybe just yoga classes and stuff. Uh, but this feeling that like for me to be meditating properly, I couldn't move an inch. Um, and I had to be lying on my back and all of this stuff. Um, and now I'm a lot more loosey-goosey with it and I've realised as well that often that pose and that rigidness and trying to stay that still actually stresses me out and again makes it more difficult to relax. Um, so I will meditate in bed now. I meditate like before I go to sleep. Um, I meditate like, yeah, do like an astral journey or something. I will do it in bed. Um, I will do it lying on my side. <laughs> Or um, I don't really do it sitting actually, I know that's the thing that a lot of people do, but I'll do it like lying on my side with my earphones in um, or just with my phone propped up or something and I will do it in a position that's actually comfortable, not in a position that feels like meditative, meditative because 
I know if you're following, you know, a traditional path or a traditional method of doing it, that there are probably are reasons for the particular positions and stuff that people take in different styles of meditation. Um, but I found it was just making everything way too formal and weird and uncomfortable for me. And so now I try and be loosey-goosey with it and I will let myself fidget. I will let my fidgeting, another ADHD thing, God damn it, maybe that's it. Now I will let myself change position while I'm meditating. I will let myself fidget or move around and stuff, which has helped immensely. Lastly, I think, and it's kind of in the same vein of like, let's not be so precious about it, is play, like if you're not using a guided thing, you know, if you're not playing something specific, play whatever the fuck kind of music you want. <laughs> um, play whatever music fits the vibe of, and I guess this really just applies not to meditations in general, but to like astral work or astral meditation. Ooh, new word. Play whatever kind of music makes sense for where you're going and where you want to go, because it does not all need to be binaural beats and or like singing bowls and all of this stuff. Um, just because it's a kind of form of meditation. And I, I think I have realized as well that I really need music um, to help. It like it helps create that bubble, that kind of, it's that transportative thing. Yeah, I'll listen to Black Rebel Motorcycle Club and head on to the astral. <laughs> That's the vibe that I want, you know? So yeah, like, and, off, and actually something that is, that can be fun as well is like wherever you are going on the astral, whether it's this, you know, deep, deep inner journey to something super heavy and spiritual, or you're like, hey, I just want to like imagine some fun stuff <laughs> to do in my brain because I can't do any of it in real life at the moment. Um, hashtag COVID. You can choose the music. Uh, something that I find really helpful is like imagining the music is like in the scene that I'm in, if that makes sense. So like, it's, what's that called in film? It's in the scene. It's diegetic. Diegetic? Am I making that up? Correct me if I'm using this word wrong, but you can use the music that you're listening to as if it's diegetic in whatever experience you're having uh, in your mind. <laughs> Um, and that is super helpful again to kind of like to transport yourself to wherever you're going. But yeah, that's been that's been a kind of revelation for me as well. It just doesn't have to be traditional, you know. Which like when I say it like that, it sounds super obvious, um, and it's kind of the theme that I come back to with all of my witchy stuff, which is that it doesn't need to look like what it seems like it should look like, <laughs> you know, um, to be doing it right. Yeah, listen to whatever kind of music fits the vibe. Okay, I'm gonna wrap it up because I've been talking for a long time and it's fucking bedtime, frankly. It's bedtime for me. But I hope you enjoyed this ramble and please, if you have thoughts um, or experiences about um, various kinds of meditation or uh, with working some magic on the astral, please do share them in the, uh, I was going to say in the description below, but that's not for you, that's for me. <laughs> please share in the comments. If you have tips for like non-traditional forms of meditation or astral travel, um, please also share those because like I say, I have gotten super into this recently and I'm all for it, but I still struggle to find things that work for me. And I'm sure I am not alone in that. Do you have any favorites for this kind of thing? Um, have you ever had some crazy shit go down in your little brain box <laughs> in, in one of these situations? Um, I would like to know. Okay, that's it. Take care and I'll see you soon. Bye.